We're going to solve a system that is not linear. Okay, admittedly, that's pretty obvious from the title, but how are we going to do this? I mean, we know that two lines, oh, they can run parallel forever. Or they can intersect somewhere. So how do we do it with a line and a parabola? Well, there's a few possibilities. One, we intersect at two points. Now, you might be thinking, why are we using this? Well, that will be explained momentarily. The other option is that they intersect at one point. So, say we have a parabola and we have a line that just touches it at one point. This is very different, of course, from a line that touches it at two points. It's like, say, like this, or like this, or whatever. Or, we could never intersect. So, parabola, line, never intersects. So, why are we using the discriminant here? Why is it that we can use a quadratic formula? I mean, okay, we get told that we are, can use a quadratic formula to find the value of the point of intersection, fine. We can use it to find whether or not this is a tangent line, so touches a curve at one point and has slope that is equal to the slope of that curve at that point. Or a secant, so intersects a curve at two points. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean a parabola. It could be a different form of curve. Or, well, a not-so-parabola, such as, say, x to the eighth power or something. Or it could be even a circle. Or any other shape, really. So why are we using this quadratic equation? Well, behold this graph. Trumpets, drum row, symbols, and so on. So in this graph, we have y equals x and y equals x squared minus 3. There is something very interesting about this graph that I hope you can notice. How far apart are these two lines? Okay, so the distance is this much, right? And here it's this much, and here it's, well... What happens? to find the actual distance here, like say from here, this line to that line. Two equals x squared minus three. Well, how do we find the difference between two numbers? We subtract, yes? So for functions, it is exactly the same principle. So which one are we going to take as, say, the top one? So the distance from here to there is plus however much. That means we need to subtract this bigger value, uh, take the bigger value, and then subtract the smaller value. So this would be between them. is x squared minus 3 minus x. So it's taking this thing, so this is 2, and this here is 1. So this is 2 minus 1. And because this is not actually uh, y, this is y2 minus y1, that's delta, say, delta y. We can write it as delta y if we so wish. But the point remains that, hey, we have this. What is a function, really? I mean, you could say, oh, y equals x. Or you can say, y minus 0, because the line x e of y equals 0, is equal to x minus 0. Because on the line that y equals 0, it's always 0. So, you could say something like this. Equals, say, ax squared plus bx plus c 
minus y0 is equal to 0. So y minus 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c minus 0. This is essentially O. Oh, every y value is actually a distance from 0. So here we make it so that every y value is going to be some distance from another y value. And we subtract the two things. Technically speaking, we should probably write it like this, but that doesn't actually make a difference in this particular case. On the other hand, if you're subtracting something that has a minus sign in the middle, well, that's a little different. When you open up the bracket, you need to flip all the signs in the middle, in, uh, inside the bracket. Not flip all the signs in the middle because, hey, what does minus x minus 1 do? Well, you open it up and you get minus x plus 1. So you have the first one also flipping the sign in a sense. So, example one. Determine whether the given linear and quadratic functions intersect. If they do, find the point or points of intersection. So here we're looking at... You may have noticed that the distance between them First of all, in subsequent questions, we're going to just going to write delta y instead of actually stating this. You may have noticed that the delta y is going to be inevitably for a quadratic versus a linear function. When you subtract, you will get a quadratic function, which means x squared minus 7x plus 15 minus 2x plus 5. So this is x squared minus 9x plus 20. You will inevitably get a quadratic relationship, which can be solved just like every single other quadratic. So you can solve it by factoring, in which this is actually a good case because it's minus 4 minus 5. They add to minus 9, they multiply to plus 20. Okay, great. But if you can't factor this, then you use the quadratic formula, as mentioned previously. Thus, you could use a discriminant to find how many roots there are, but in this case, the factoring is really obvious x minus 4 times x minus 5 intersections at x equals 4 and x equals 5. Hey, we don't know what the y values are, do we? Well, what do we have here? We know that these points are going to be on this line. We also know that they're going to be on this curve. Which one do you think we're going to substitute into? Yeah, okay, it sounds pretty obvious. Uh, we're going to substitute into this line because we don't want to have to square anything. We're lazy. People are lazy. Now, in case you haven't noticed, it was a guy who was really, really lazy who invented the wheel. It was also a guy who was lazy, uh, too lazy to chew his food properly, uh, who invented fire to cook food, or invented control of fire, rather. So, lazy people basically invented the world as we know it. So let's be lazy. y1 equals 2 times 4 minus 5. So 8 minus 5 equals 3. y2 equals 2 times 5 minus 5 equals 10 minus 5 equals 5. So the points are 
or the intersections are R for three and five five. Now for the next problem we have this. What do we do? Exactly the same thing. So delta y is equal to 2x squared minus 2x plus 1. Please note that you can subtract them either way. It's just I have this thing for preferring a being positive when I finally have to evaluate the whole thing. Why should I do this? Well, having a negative a makes it a little bit more complex to factor sometimes, which is of course understandably a bit of a nuisance. Okay, so 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 3x minus 5. So 2x squared minus 2x plus 1 minus 3x plus 5 equals 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. Now, can we factor this easily at first glance? No. So, what do we do? x equals negative b plus minus root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So, this is equal to 5 plus minus 25 minus 4 times 2 times c is 6. Hmm, we have a problem. 2 times 2. 4 times 2 times 6. 4 times 6 is 24. So double of that is of course much greater than 25. So no real roots, no points of intersection. Okay. Now what about this example here? Well, here we have a parabola that opens downward, we have a line that slopes downward. How does this actually work out? Well, we'll see soon enough. So delta y is equal to negative x minus 1. Of course you can subtract these in either order, but I'm going to do it this way. Plus 3x minus 5. equals negative x minus 1 plus x squared. Be warned that having to flip more signs is also an opportunity for more things to go wrong. So if you aren't very good at factoring or very used to it, then of course the alternative works well enough. I to always put the one with the actual quadratic in front. x squared minus 4x plus 4. Now, x minus 2 squared. So, intersection, well, technically speaking, we should probably call this tangent, but hey. So sub in y equals negative 2 minus 1 equals negative 3. So 
tangent point to negative three. All right, let's go on to more examples. So determine the equation of a line that has slope 1 and is tangent to this curve. There's a problem here. First of all, we haven't learned calculus yet, so we haven't learned derivatives. We can't use derivatives to just, bam, take the derivative, find where the slope equals 1, and there we go. So if we can't do that, how can we do this instead? Well, the line must be y equals x plus b and this is tangent what this implies is that delta y has b squared minus 4ac equals 0 now, of course, if you aren't very used to this sort of thing, you might want to use a different letter here, like D or E or whatever. Uh, but the point remains that you get this for your delta Y. So delta Y is actually equal to X plus B minus negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 4. So x plus b plus 2x squared minus 5x minus 4. So this is 2x squared minus 4x plus b minus 4. So the b squared minus 4ac equals 0 comes out to well the actual b term here is going to be negative 4 so negative 4 squared minus 4 times a to 2 and c b minus 4 and this is equal to 0 now negative 4 squared is 16 minus 4 times 2 times b is 8b 4 times 2 times 4 is 32 equals 0. So we get 8b because uh, in previous experience I find students seem to take it better if I don't move things over and add at the same time. So this is equal to 48 and b equals 6. The line is y equals x plus b y equals x plus 6 all right next example well we didn't get a slope here but we did get an x-intercept so in the case of y equals mx plus b we have so, first, y equals mx plus 4. What do we need? We need, once again, b squared minus 4ac equals 0, because we're looking for tangent. Therefore, delta y is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 5 minus this line to find the distance between them. 
After all, if we have a plot of, say, two guys who are running, to find the distance between them, well, we have to subtract one plot from the other, right? Well, actually, that gives us the function of the distance between them over time. But, hey, who's counting? So, x squared plus 5x plus 5 minus mx minus 4. So, this is x squared plus 5 minus m x plus 1. I think we get the feeling of what this actually goes for. Now there are uh, actually two options. Why? Because, oh, x plus 1 squared is going to end up with a 2 in the middle. x minus 1 squared is going to end up with negative 2 in the middle. So, what we're looking at is B. the A and C values and the tangency requirement which requires that this delta y here have a zero at only one point despite being quadratic which means that it only hits zero once and never again so this will give us 5 minus m equals plus minus 2. So m equals 3 or m equals 7. Alright. Next example.